Let's get into the Bible, amen? Let's go. I hope you guys are ready for a good Bible study. Uh, come on. Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about what is the vision for the Fresno Men's Ministry. Oh, Ooh, tell us come on. Bro. Uh, we have a group chat, all of the guys. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have noticed what the name on that group chat is. Uh -huh. But it's the men's group chat. And it's called Battle Ready Brothers. Oh, oh right? That's crazy. Battle Ready Brothers. And you'll also notice I've got a little group chat with, uh, with Ethan, Jay, and Malik. Mm. I need to add uh, Frankie to it. And what is it called? Battle Ready. Mm. So you can kind of catch a little bit of a theme here mm. of what the men's ministry should be all about. Mm. Well, a few years ago, this was pre, not pre-COVID necessarily, but maybe it was pre-COVID. Uh, I weighed about a, almost 200 pounds. Wow. Come on. Bro. I had gotten to a place physically that I'd never, ever been in in my life, and I told myself I would never, ever get there. Uh, but sedentary lifestyle, sitting in a desk for a living, uh, versus what I used to do prior to more managerial work was I was in the classroom all day long. I was doing this. Literally five to six days out of the week, I was doing this. Uh -huh. Standing in front, you know, really like... Uh, this is like jazzercise, you know, what I'm saying? this is like, you know, a little bit of a, a, a Zumba as the sisters like to do, you know what I mean? Just jumping up and down, excited, you know what I mean? Talking for a living. But I stopped doing a lot of that and I became, I, my job became much more administrative, much more managerial. So I'm having other people do these kinds of things. And so I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. And so that, along with just not eating right and everything else, I started to gain a lot of weight. Ooh. I've never been a fan of the gym, ever, uh -huh. uh, but I've, I always had a really high metabolism. Mm -hmm. About 35, that hit a wall, and I just started gaining weight from there, but I was a good buck 65 before that happened, and it, it kind of crept up on me mm -hmm. until wow, I got on the scale, and I'm almost 200 pounds, 198. Wow. Which to me is like, some people, maybe that's not a big deal, but to me, that was a really big deal. And I was that way for a long time, and, and, I, and I got in this position, I'll talk a little bit more about this in the lesson, but I got in this position where I knew I needed to do something, but I just didn't want to put in the work in order to do it. Mm. I knew what it was going to take, changing our eating habits as a family. I knew it was going to take me having to go to the gym. Every dude around me in their middle ages, between 30 and 45, are like, I got to go to the gym, I got to go to the gym, I go to the gym, I do this, I do that. I didn't want to do any of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'll do a prayer walk, man, you know what I mean? Like, just moseying around, praying to the Lord, you know? <laughs> but, like, any other physical activity I wasn't interested in. Wow. And it fi finally hit me pretty hard where I was in Sunday service and I was asked to lead a song. Oh, look on. And I led a song and literally I almost fainted. Oh, wow. Because I couldn't breathe. Oh, wow, wow. I was so winded. Leading a song that I've led forever, it seems like. That was wake-up call number one that I ignored. Wake-up call number two was I was out with doing some yard work, and, uh, and, I, and I also started to, you know how like when you start to see black and gray? <laughs> oh, Because right? yeah. I got up too fast. Yeah. And they feel dizzy. <laughs> yeah. So third wake-up call. Wow. I'm trying to put on my shoes. Oh my God. Oh, and it's not that I was so, you know, fat that I couldn't like bend over, and put on my shoes. <laughs> but I got, I couldn't breathe. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Bending over, I couldn't breathe. Yeah. It was, you know, but it never really hit me until I was on a business trip. I was on a business trip, and if you've ever been to the airport, you know you've got uh, those like. Um, you know, televisions that have CNN on it or whatever it is, right? Yeah, the news yeah, channel. Yeah. Well, what they were showing was CCTV, that black and white, really scratchy TV footage mm -hmm. of a gunman. I believe it was in a, an airport somewhere in Hun Turkey or Hungary or someplace like that. Wow. And all I remember seeing, I still have it vividly in my mind. I see him in the middle of this, you know, those big aisles that are in an airport. You've got all those chairs on the one side, and then you've got all the chairs on the other side. And here mm -hmm. he is. The, the CTTV is coming from here. He's looking this way with his handgun pointing and just shooting. Wow. 
And I see, you see seas of people running away because it shoots to other CCTV footage camera mm -hmm. angles and everybody's just scattering. And I'm like, it's one dude, it's one gun, why are people running? Mm. I was just mystified at that moment. I didn't understand. Mm. Why isn't somebody doing something about this? Mm. And I paused and I thought, would I do anything about it? Mm. Tell them, bro. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would. And I started to fantasize about what I could do. I was like, well, he's pointing this way. That's his focus over there. Well, if I was right here, I'd be like going around here. You know what I mean? Like around the chair, ducking down, making sure, you know, if you look and look at, you know what I mean? I've watched enough cop shows. I've watched enough, you know, <laughs> adventure shows to know kind of the <laughs> angles and whatnot. Coming around, coming around, coming around. And then I would just tackle it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I hate him, bro. <laughs> and then on, bro. the Holy Spirit was very, very vivid to me. Mm. He said, Eric, could you? Mm. Could you? Mm. Mm. We know the passage that Jesus shares with his disciples, the spirit is willing, to, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. 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 And he brought me to a movie reference. Old movie, Zorro. Uh -huh. Antonio Banderas and Anthony Hopkins. If you've never seen it, it was, it was a while back. I, <laughs> I, I think it. half of you weren't even born when it came out. Yeah. <laughs> me and Enrico were on top of it. <laughs> and in the movie... Uh, the Zorro character, pre-Zorro, mm. uh, Antonio Banderas is trying to get back at this soldier. Mm. Because this soldier killed his brother or his family or something like that. And he grabbed a sword and he was ready to take him out. Mm. And the current Zorro character stopped him and he says, you would have fought bravely and died quickly. Mm. Oh and that's what popped into my head. Yeah. Is I would have fought bravely and died quickly. Oof. Why? Wow. Because... I couldn't. As much as I would want to, as much as the adrenaline would be pumping through my veins, I would probably be able to, you know, take something out before I got shot. Yeah. I would have fought bravely and died quickly. Mm, come on, bro. And that led me to go, I want to be the kind of man that if a situation like that arises, I cannot say, yes, I would go, I want to go. Mm. I want to have the heart to be a man that is going to handle that kind of business. Mm. Not just the internal gumption to be that kind of man, but yeah. physically, yeah. I can take him out. Mm. Or at least have a darn good time trying. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Not just fighting bravely and dying quickly. I'm fine with death. Yeah. Mm. But fighting bravely and taking him out, even if it means he's taking me out too. Mm. And so what did I do? After that business trip, I came home, and I said, babe, I need to get a membership to a gym. Mm -hmm. And not just any gym. I need to get a membership, and we were we had just moved to Contra Costa at the time, and there was a gym uh, uh, down the street called UFC Gym. Mm -hmm. And not only, babe, do I need to get this membership, I need personal training. Mm -hmm. I need personal training. I need to know how to use this equipment. I need to know how to do these things. Mm, because on, I can go to a gym and do curls for the girls. <laughs> I can go to the gym and do these things. Like, that's not a big deal. But, but I, 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 I need functional fitness. Right. Come on. Yeah. And so when I sat down with the guy who sold us this, uh, the, the, you know, the things for the gym, he's like, well, what are you looking to do? And I told him that story. I'm looking to be a guy that if it happens, mm. I can take him out. Mm. I love it. And we put a plan in place for me to be able to become that guy. Mm. Mm. Wow. About six months later, I had want, w w gone through all of my personal training that I had, and we were just getting ready to sign up for another six months, and I got hit with COVID. That mm. was the fastest 20 pounds I'd ever lost in my life. <laughs> I lost 20 pounds. Wow. And I'm still not able to do some of the things that I was able to do prior to getting COVID. Mm -hmm. Just because of the way that it affected my body. But I tell you what, I went back into the gym afterwards and I started getting strong again. I started strengthening myself again. Mm -hmm. I started look, you know, being able to spar with the, with the bags again. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. Wow. Come on. And then we move here. And I'm like, I gotta go back to the gym. 
I have never felt so fired up Come on, to get a gym membership in my life. Woo! It's been two months since I've been in the gym. Come on. And this week was the first week that I've actually gone back to the gym. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Why? Let's go. Because I want to be ready for battle. Woo! I want to be battle ready. Come on, Come on bro. bro. That is what this men's ministry is all about. Go to First Chronicles 12. Come on, bro. Come on. First Chronicles 12. Look here in verse 8. First Chronicles 12, if you just read First Chronicles 12, uh -huh. the words battle ready are all over it. Mm -hmm. Every single group that is mentioned here is men ready for battle. Mm -hmm. But here's how it begins. Look at verse 8. Some Gadites defected to David at his stronghold in the wilderness. They were brave warriors ready for battle and able to handle the shield and spear. Their faces were the faces of lions and they were as swift as gazelles on the mountain. Wow. That's who I want the Fresno International Christian Church men's ministry to be. Wow. Come on. Faces Come on. of lions. Swift as gazelles on the mountain. What does that mean? They're quick. They're fast. They're nimble. <laughs> Bible uses the analogy of gazelles being able to stand on the heights. Wow. It's like you've got a, a, a little tiny, I mean, have you guys seen these like mountain goats and stuff? And like, yeah. they're like these huge mountain goats, you know what I'm saying? They're huge. Mm. And yet they're standing on like maybe three inches of rock face. Whoa. And what do they do? They look up, okay. And they just jump up to the next three inches of rock. Mm. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Oh, faces of lions, this is fierce. Mm. A force to be reckoned with people. We walk around campus. We walk around our workplaces. And, and mm. people just, they just know we aren't to be messed with. Mm. Yeah. We're not to be trifled with. Mm. Come on, bro. Why? Because we're brave warriors ready for battle. Wow. Come on, bro. But here's the problem. We're not ready for battle. Mm. Come on, bro. The first thing that a man needs to be in order to be battle ready is a man needs to be truthful. Mm. A man needs to stop lying. Mm. What comes to mind when you think of the word integrity? Anybody, what comes to mind when you think of the word integrity? Just shout it out. Someone tells the truth even if it's hard. Mm. Okay, good. I would say character. Okay. Strength. Character, strength. Reliable. Reliable. Uh, you fight for the, the truth. Fight for the truth. Yeah. Keeping his word, just no matter what. Yeah. Right. Keep, keeping your vow, even when it hurts. Yeah. David says in the Psalms. Yeah. Mm. That's good. The word integrity comes from the word integer. Mm. If you're a math major, right? We got Chris here. He's a math so major, Chris. right? Ooh. He understands, right? It, it's it's a whole number. Mm. Yeah. That is an integer. It's about being a whole person. Not one person in one arena and one person in another arena. Mm. You have integrity. Uh, very early on when I got my start in the business world, I worked for a bank. Mm. And in this bank, I was a bill collector for auto loans. So I would call people up uh, who were past due in their auto loans and I'd try to collect their payments. And um, I got a job there as that bill collector that I moved into a supervisor role then I moved into a trainer role. And as a trainer, I traveled around the country doing new hire orientation training for all these different uh, parts of the business. And one of our core values was integrity. Mm. And so I would look at them and I would say, okay guys, integrity. Can somebody be one way at work, have integrity at work, and yet not have integrity at home, and that be okay? Uh -huh. And you get many different answers and be like, no way, you can't do that. Mm. Other people are like, yeah, I mean, be, you're one person at work and you're one person at home. No big deal. Oh. The problem is, sooner or later, and this is what I would tell people, you cannot have integrity at work mm. and then not have integrity at home. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Equally, you cannot have integrity at home and not have it at work. Mm. Yeah. Or any other school or whatever else you want to do. Right. You either have it 
or you do not. Mm. Because sooner or later, sooner or later, who you are is going to come to the surface one place yeah. or another. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you will be found out. Yeah. You will be exposed for who you are. Mm. Come on, bro. Being a person of integrity means that you are the same person no matter where you are, no matter what is going on, no matter who is around you. Mm. Mm. Go to Proverbs chapter 10. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Proverbs chapter 10. Preach. Come on, bro. The title of my lesson is Walking in Security mm. or Walking in Security. Mm. You might want to write that down to get the difference. <laughs> walking in Security or Walking in Security. Proverbs 10, look here at verse 9. The Bible reads, but whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Now what's crazy about this life is that no matter who we are, we will always be exposed. Yeah. Mm. The challenge for men of integrity is to stay on the straight path. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's an issue of ethics. It's an issue of morals. Ethics is what we say. Morals is what we do. Yeah. These yeah. must be the same. Yeah. This is integrity. Come on. Uh, We're all familiar with 1 Timothy 4.16 that says, Watch your life and doctrine closely. This is an issue of spiritual integrity. Uh, yeah. Making sure that we practice what we preach. Mm. The Pharisees did not do this. Religious people do not do this. Mm. Wow. You know, I'm doing a study on... Uh, prayer, and if you go to Matthew 6, one of the interesting things that you'll find is three key elements of spirituality, of spiritual practice in a disciple's life. Mm. And you'll notice there in chapter, chapter 6, verse 1, he talks about giving to the needy. Then there in chapter 6, verse 5, he talks about prayer. And then there in chapter 6, verse 16, he talks about fasting. So he's got giving, praying, and fasting. Mm -hmm. And the key point in each and every one of these paragraphs is hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. It's hypocrisy. The Pharisees did not do this. They had great ethics. They had great words. But they did not live it out. Mm -hmm. And that's hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. on, Proverbs 11 Verse 3. Look at Proverbs 11, verse 3. Spend a good chunk of time in Proverbs tonight. Mm. In order for us to be battle ready, we need to be men of integrity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. In order for us to be battle ready, we have to be men that stop lying. Mm. Yeah. Proverbs 11, verse 3 says this. The integrity of the upright guides them but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Wow. Mm. The dictionary definition of integrity is this. Quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. And those are our two points tonight is honesty and principles. Mm. Honesty and principles. I want to take a few moments and talk about these two words in this definition as a way... Not to just introduce what we're going to talk about tonight, but what you will be learning and discovering across our entire time in this Battle Ready Men's Ministry. Mm -hmm. As a disciple, especially as a man who is a disciple, mm -hmm. go on, go on. we must put ourselves in positions to create conditions of exposure. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Because I don't think we fully understand this. As a disciple, especially as a masculine disciple, mm. we must put ourselves in position where we must create conditions where we get exposed. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, we will be found out. Mm. Because God will allow us to be exposed sooner or later. Because yeah. mm -hmm. there's no hiding from God. Yeah. Right. Hebrews 4.12 says nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is laid bare before the eyes of him right. to whom we must come to count. Mm. Let's begin with honesty. Wow. Wow. You know the most powerful person in the room 
is the one who has nothing to hide. Wow, that's true. Proverbs 12, verse 22. Proverbs 12, verse 22, should just be the next page over. It says, The Lord detests lying lips, mm. but he delights in people who are trustworthy. Mm. You know, John 8, 44 says that when we lie, we are speaking the devil's native language. Mm. Revelation 21 says that those who lie are destined for the lake of fire. They're going to go to hell. Wow. Wow. We're called in Ephesians 4.25 to put off falsehood and to speak truthfully to our neighbor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, pause. Why, Eric, are you diving into this lying thing? I mean, we're all disciples here. Like, mm. We shouldn't be lying. Mm. Come on, bro. You're coming, coming across a little bit too strong here, Eric. Mm. Some of you may be thinking, oh, I'm not a liar. Mm. I don't lie. I'm, I'm pretty truthful. I'm a, I'm a truthful guy. I, I even speak the truth in love. Oh. oh. <laughs> but I want to push back on you. Oh, bro. Because we lie every single day. Mm. Every single one of us. Yeah. We're liars. Mm. Come on, bro. Now, there are two kinds of lies. We teach this in the light and darkness study, where we teach it. A little bit of a different way, but I think it'll make sense. We have lies of commission, uh -huh. and then we have lies of omission. Lies of commission are lies that we tell. These are outright, blatant, and hardcore lies. You did it. You did this when you actually did it. Akaya, did you take the trash out? Uh -huh. Yes. Then why is it still sitting right here in front of you? <laughs> Canaan, did you clean up the dog mess? Yes. Then why, when I look outside, is there dog mess all over the place? Mm. Mm -hmm. Are just two examples. Yeah. <laughs> lies of commission. These are lies that we say. They're blatant, they're outright, they're hardcore, complete mm. fabrications of the truth. Mm. But then, the more insidious one are lies of omission. These are the lies we don't tell. These are things like, it's not that big a deal. Uh -huh. I don't need to get open about that. Mm, come on, bro. I, I just, I looked for a minute. I didn't masturbate. Uh -huh. I, I didn't do anything with that. I, I just, it was just the, the app popped open. I clicked it. I looked. I uh, looked at it for a little while and then it goes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gave. Come on, bro. Yeah. It, it, it's it's the omission mm. of truth. Mm. Wow. Now let's be oh, honest wow. here. There are areas in our life where we are just not honest. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mainly honesty with ourselves about where we're truly at. Mm. Yeah. Come on, bro. Where we lack integrity and where we're not walking securely. Mm. It's the area that you have a hard time talking to others about. When they get open with you, because you're struggling with the same thing. Mm. I like to break it down into what I call F4. Mm. Oh, no. Faith, family, fitness, and finances. <clears throat> Some people call it the space suit. You guys might hear that every once in a while if you're hanging out with anybody down in L.A., because Tim Kernan likes to call it the space suit. It's about 10 different things that encompass and, and encompass what a man needs in his life. Mm. But I just break it down into four. Mm. Fitness, faith, family, and finances. Mm. Looking at these four areas, where are you not being honest with yourself? You know, maybe it's your fitness, like mine. Mm. Now, I've lost a lot of weight. <laughs> even though I haven't been in the gym. In fact, I've been fighting for a long, long time. Mm. I've been hovering. I was about, I went from that 198, I got down to about 182, and then I got COVID, and then I went down to about a buck 60, and that was not okay because it wasn't like I lost a lot of muscle. I lost a lot of everything. Mm. Mm. And so I gained all that back by the end of that year, and so I got back up to about 189. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so I was hovering around 189. Then I went back to the gym. 
And I got down and I was hovering around 183. Mm -hmm. My goal weight, honestly, is 165. Mm -hmm. oh. But I'm probably not going to get there because I think to some degree that might be a little unhealthy. So a good 170, 175 of good body weight mm -hmm. is where I'm is what my goal is. Wow. My weight. <laughs> now, I weighed myself just a couple days ago. I don't do this very often, but I do did weigh myself 178. Wow. 178. And most of that is because I'm probably not eating a whole lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is I'm preaching five, six times a week. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I'm much more active. This way I take about two to three walks every day. 30-minute walks every day. And starting this week, I'm back in the gym. So I'll start to see the muscles start to, because muscle weighs more than fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> but if you're like me, and we'll get to this a little bit more later, the lie that I told myself over the past few months is that it doesn't really matter how I look on the outside. It's what's on the inside that counts. Mm. It's a cute little coffee cup, mm. you know, saying. Mm. But I was telling myself that. Uh, I, should not, I should focus more on prayer and Bible study or, or going on campus and getting into Bible studies or, or spending time with my family instead of the gym. Mm. I'm more healthy than that guy, so I'm good. Or I've got plenty of time to work on this. Mm -hmm. It's a lie. Yeah. Mm. It's a lie. Or maybe it's your finances. Ah, it's okay if I pay my rent late. My roommates understand. Oof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just burying our head in the sand instead of truly looking at the facts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go to Romans chapter 4. Come on, Come on. You know, Romans chapter 4 says that Abraham faced the facts, yet he did not waver in his faith. Romans chapter 4, let's look here in verse 18. Mm. See, what happens is we can get ourselves psyched out about the truth. Yeah. That if I really see the truth, if I really hear the truth, then all of a sudden I'm going to feel terrible. Mm. You don't have to feel terrible. The facts just are. Yeah. They're not right, they're not wrong, they just are. Yeah. Mm. You can divvy out the facts into right and wrong later, but at first you just got to get there. Romans 4, verse 18. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him. So shall your offspring be. And here's the kicker. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about 100 years old, and Sarah's room was also dead, Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. What do we see here? Abraham knew, I'm old, my wife is old. We probably haven't been together in years, mm. if you're over 100 years old. There were more married people in here. I would talk a little bit more about this. But since most of them are single, I won't talk about it. But I think you understand my point. Thank you, bro. Yeah. He saw the facts. He faced the facts. Yeah. He didn't just see them. They weren't in his mind's eye. They weren't in his peripheral vision that he just didn't want to. I just don't want to look at them. I just no. He faced them. Mm. He saw the reality. Come on, bro. And he said, "If God said it." <laughs> mm. Yeah. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he said it. <laughs> right. Come on, bro. And instead of weakening in his faith, no, the Bible says he actually was strengthened in his faith. Wow. Mm. And gave glory to God. Yeah, wow. that's awesome. Because he had a deep conviction that God can do whatever God wants to do. Mm. That's true. There's a battle going on in each of us the facts yeah. versus fiction, the yeah. facts yeah. versus fantasy. Come on. Mm. The life we think we are living and the life we are actually living. Wow. That is not integrity. Mm. That is duplicity. Wow. And what did we just read in Proverbs about duplicity? The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. God says if you're duplicitous, you're unfaithful to him. Mm. Wow. 
Because you lack integrity. That's Proverbs 11, 3. Wow. 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 It's a Come big on, deal. Man. Come on, bro. Wow. Integrity is living the facts. Mm. As a disciple, it's living the facts mm. with faith. Yeah. Mm. Come on, bro. We don't believe in fake it till you make it. No. Mm. We believe in faith it till you make it. Mm. Yeah. Because that's what Abraham did mm. and yeah. set us an example. Hmm. Many of us are inside this box of lies that we've told ourselves and others that just fill to the brim. And that's why we're not changing. Hmm. Yeah. That's why we lack breakthrough in our lives. Wow. That's on. why we lack repentance. Hmm. The facts are in there, but so are all these feelings about the facts. Hmm. Hmm. Your feelings are irrelevant. Facts are relevant. Hmm. Your feelings are there. They're important. They're part of the deal. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, you're never, ever, ever going to get anywhere if all you're focused on is your feelings. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Those yeah. facts and feelings create a story that we tell ourselves and we tell others. Mm. This is who we put on. This is the facade. Mm. So we fake it till we make it. Or we tell ourselves... They won't like us if I show them the real me, or, or it's not really that bad. Mm. And it's a lie. Mm. Come on, bro. We're not healthy physically, we're not healthy financially, we're struggling in our faith, or we're lonely and miserable in our relationships. Mm. And so these lies perpetuate, the story gets told over and over and over, and puts us in a prison of our own making. Mm. Wow. Sheesh. What we think becomes what we do. Mm, which gets us the results we are getting. And here's what's cool. And here's what's scary. Most of us, our results are getting us what we want. Mm. Mm. So the very feelings mixed with the facts, the stories that we're telling, the lies that we're telling ourselves are actually getting us the results that we think we want. Mm. Come on, bro. People think I'm awesome, so they leave me alone. Oh. People think I'm saved, so they leave me alone. Mm. <laughs> People think I'm not struggling, so they leave me alone. Mm. Wow. And yet, the very thing that we want so badly is help. Mm. Mm. Because we're putting up a front. Because we're not walking in integrity. Because we're lying to ourselves and others. Mm. You know, Come on, bro. We don't get what we really want. Wow. What we really need. Let me ask you three questions that I want you to answer. And write these down. Number one. Mm. Number one. What is the greatest lie that you are telling yourself at this moment? Mm. What is the greatest lie that you are telling yourself at this moment? Number two, what is the greatest lie that you're telling others at this very moment? What is the greatest lie that you're telling others at this moment? And then the biggest one of all, what is the greatest lie that you're telling God mm. at this moment? What is the biggest lie that you're telling God at this moment? We must take responsibility for our lives. Yeah. Our results are our own. Mm. Where are you at today? Whatever the answer might be, guess what? It's your fault. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's your fault. Yep. It's not your mom, it's not your dad, it's not your pastor, it's not your school. Mm, come on, bro. It's nobody else's fault but yours. Mm. How do I know that? Because where I'm at in life right now is my fault. I can blame a ton of other people. Easy. Where this church is at is my fault. Mm. Where my marriage is at, my fault. Mm. Where my kids are at, my fault. Mm. My fault. Yep. That can either be devastating or it can be extremely freeing. Mm -hmm. Because if it's my fault, guess who has the power and authority to fix it? Mm -hmm. Me. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. I need your help. Who's going to fix my marriage? Me. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. With God's help. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we faith until we make it. Amen? Amen. Come on, bro. <laughs> Who's going to fix it? Me. If it's my fault, if the results that I have that I don't want are my fault, the results that I can, I can get the results that I want. 
Because it's in my power to do it. Mm. Because it was in my power that got me here in the first place. Mm. Thank God that on the other side of lies is liberation. Mm. We can break free and be liberated to think, to do, to get the results that we want in, in order to succeed. Mm. But unless your foundation is based on facts, mm. no matter how awesome your goals are, it will simply be fantasy. Mm. Unless you start out, unless we start this men's ministry with a commitment to telling the truth, with a commitment to walking in the light. Yeah. Come on, bro. Not just a commitment to one another, but a commitment to yourself mm -hmm. and to others. It will all be for nothing. Right. Come on, bro. Yeah. It'll be for nothing. <laughs> you have the opportunity to look at your results, to really, really look at them, mm. to get help and to grow from the experience. We're going to walk through many, many topics. <clears throat> I'm going to preach on parenting, which is what I need. I'm going to preach on being a good father, being a good husband, mm. being a good friend, being brave, being accountable, being loyal. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to preach on all these things. Woo. Come on, bro. And we've got to look at ourselves and not just go, wow, that's cool. Mm. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm... No, no, no. We've got to go, is this me? Mm. Mm. And if it's not, how do I get there? Yeah. And we got to be okay with we're not there. Yeah. I had to be okay with I'm going to fight bravely and die quickly. Mm. And that was the catalyst mm. for me to go, what do I need to do in order to be battle ready? Yeah. Mm. But if you already think you're battle ready, you're in the wrong room. Mm. You're in the wrong church. Yeah. You're in the wrong place. Preach, bro. Come on, bro. You should be out there being a superhero. <laughs> you don't need to be in here listening to me. Mm. But all of us, including me, I have to go, what is true? Mm -hmm. I can't live in fantasy land. Yeah. We have the opportunity to look at our results, to really look at them and get help and grow. But it begins with telling the truth to ourselves and telling the truth to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, Dr. Henry Cloud says this about integrity. Integrity is the courage to meet the demands of reality. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. To look at our reality and go, now I know what I need. Now, now that we have our lives out in the open, we're going to be honest. We made that commitment. We have to change our story. Mm. We've got this box. Where we've got facts. And we've got feelings. Yeah. What are we going to do with this? We have to change the story and base it on truth. Yeah. Mm. John 17, 17, Jesus prays, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. He's talking to God. He's saying God's word, the Bible, is truth. This is what will change your story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what will sanctify yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. We base our life on the principles mm. and the values in God's words. Mm. We'll talk about values at another time. Go to Psalm 119. Come on, bro. Come on. Preach that. Psalm 119. Look here at verse 105. Preach, bro. Come on. Come on. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. Mm. Pretty simple. Now, I don't know what you think of when you visually read, read this with, your, with the eyes of your heart. I don't know if you guys see, like, you know, if you like late night TV, they kind of show these, like, brand new, humongous, like, super bright, uh, uh, like, police mm. flashlights. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's like a handheld, like... You know, one of those, those big old lights. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it literally makes that noise. It's like, and it's like, bam! You know, it's so bright. No, 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 no. They didn't have that kind of stuff back then. Back then, they had a little tiny, uh, a little tiny jar that had a little wick in it. Wow. And it was literally, you would hold it like this. Think of like a candle light. And it had just enough light for you to see one step foot in front of you. Mm. Wow. <laughs> You can hold it like this and maybe get three. You know what I mean? <laughs> what is God saying here? Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my mouth. 
Wow. Your word gives me my step-by-step -step instructions yes. on how to live my life. Yeah. Come on, bro. The only way for us to know what to do and who to be is the word of God. Mm. Yeah. This is what God's word is meant to be for us. A light that gives us one step in front of the other, one step at a time. You know, in the game of baseball, you don't win with home runs. Games are not won by home runs. You know what they're won by? Base hits. Yeah. Singles. Singles. Come on, bro. If you get the bases loaded, sure, it would be awesome to get a grand slam. That's the glory. But you know what to win a game? Just get a base hit. I go to first. First goes to second. Second goes to third. Third goes home. Another base hit. Keep it going. That's how you win a game. Singles. Singles. One run after the other. Yeah. That's how you win. Mm. Our lives are built one skill upon the other. Mm. One line upon the other. One precept upon the other. One principle upon the other. Until we become the men that God has called us to be. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah. And that's who we truly want to be and are meant to be anyway. Mm. Yeah. But we must have guiding principles in our lives. And a standard if it's going to work. Yeah. Mm. Go to 1 Timothy 4.16. Come on, bro. Mm. Again, we're familiar with this passage. It's, it's not a new passage for us. 1 Timothy 4.16. The Bible says, Be diligent in these matters. Mm. What matters? The matters that Paul had just gotten done talking to Timothy about. Be mm. diligent in these matters. Give yourself Holy to them. Meaning, they must consume the way that you live. Mm. For what purpose? So that you know that you're doing the right thing. Mm. No? That's not what he says. No. So that when you stand on the scale, you know that you've done what you're supposed to do. Mm. No, 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 no. Mm. There's only one purpose for this. So that others can see your progress. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Oh, mm. yeah. When we have integrity between what we believe, our principles, our values, our standards, and the way that we act and behave, there is a cosmic shift in our lives, and we become the men and women who are saved. Mm. And you have the authority and the ability, with God's power, to save others. Yeah. Mm. Wow. The grace of God has its effect in our lives, and we not only can help ourselves, but others throughout the same process. Mm. Yeah. Paul tells Timothy to show his work. I used to hate this in school, <laughs> showing your work. Right? You had to do the math problem, mm. and you could pretty much do it in your head, or the way that you would do it was like a different way, because you know your, your dad or your mom like taught you, and, uh, and they did it a different way. Like I'm trying to teach my kids how to do long division. And they do all this weird, wonky, like sideways junk, and I just went straight down. It's like, well, I don't even know what I, I got to stay away from you because you have your mom help you with math. Because you're doing it way different. I can't do it that way, Dad. Why? If you get the same answer, because I got to show my work. And I got to, oh, forget it, man. Right? Mm. But in God's economy, we have to show our work. Yeah. Right. Because our work yeah. is proof. Yeah. Wow. Our work is proof that God is with us. Mm. Wow. He says, show your work. Show others the results of this life and doctrine. Show them how it works. Show them how it's done. Mm. This is our task. Mm. As a men's ministry, in this life of a disciple, your task is to be a light, and you watch your life and doctrine, as you focus day by day to live out the standards of the Bible. Yeah, mm -hmm. there it is. There oh, is God. no more freeing feeling in the world than to know that you are walking with God humbly mm -hmm. and with integrity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Let's look at Proverbs 10, 9 again as we close out. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. Come on. Come along, bro. Preach. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah. Come on, bro. Whoever walks in integrity mm. walks securely. Mm. Wow. 
But whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but every single day. Mm. Whether it be in your physical health, whether it be in your emotional well-being, your time management, goal setting. As we move on to more and more other topics that we're going to dive into from the scriptures. Let's be men of integrity. Mm. Who are honest with ourselves. Who are honest with others, but most importantly, honest to God. Amen. And who live by the standards and principles of the Bible. Let's be men who do not just, do, do not walk in insecurity. Mm -hmm. But who walk in security. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, brothers.